Hello, congregation. This is Howard Teachma, and I am your moderator-elect. And we are well into June, Pride Month. Time moves quickly, and so much is growing and unfolding like the flowers in my garden. Preparations for the interim pastor are moving right along. We are, doing, we are done with phase one step of saying farewell, and now phase two, embracing our interim time, is unfolding such that this coming week you will receive communication from the moderators introducing our interim pastor, who will start mid-July. I also today want to introduce the person in our pulpit, Calandra Nevenzal, our Southwest Association of the Michigan UCC minister, who works with congregations in our association, which is from Kalamazoo down to Indiana and Battle Creek over to the lakeshore. I've known her through the Southwest Association Council that I was on for nearly 10 years. She is a wonderful person, and I'm so glad she is here to lead the message today. Back to gardening and pride. Working a garden, pulling weeds, watering and nourishing plants, moving plants, developing self-sustaining plant communities. I am just passionate about that. And a diversity in plant culture, free to bloom and grow in your setting. That's what FCC is really about, I think, and what pride is about. Our becoming open and affirming ONA some 10 years ago, when I was just becoming moderator the last time, was an overwhelming, supportive move by the con congregation to publicly claim a welcoming stance to LGBTQA people who had limited safe options to find a church home. As you can see, it, it's, it affects me deeply. I sensed the potential for that way back in the early 90s when I first started attending. Look at where we are today. As we know, living an extravagant welcome is not easy. To make this space requires time of reflecting and letting go so we can embrace something new. Calls us to love instead of judge, to let go of needing to be right and acknowledging we are all works in progress. And at the core, we are a mystery that needs to be held lightly and in the context of a church community. A shallow stream born of a rigid, congruent thinking or labeling other groups as not as special is not our path. We instead seek a oneness which is deep and wide. It also requires good swimming skills to avoid the fears associated with fast running or deep murky waters. Oneness born from curiosity and being amazed at how each one of us is so unique and yet part of this one body of Christ. Dear friends, we have everything we need. In about a month, the interim pastor will be here. The joy and sparkle of Pride Month is among us. And in spite of all the fear of the other, which we daily hear, we are really just one in the body of Christ. Let's go swimming. And as we always say each Sunday, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning, people of God. My name is Richard Benink. Please join me in the call to worship. From many lands we gather as a people. Out of many, we are one. Of different ages and abilities, identities and orientations, we gather as a people. Out of many, we are one. With diverse hopes and dreams, we gather as a people. 
out of many, we are one. Each carrying within us many voices, we gather as a people, holding happiness alongside hurt, often in the same moment. Inside every one of us, a crowd of ideas, feelings, and questions. Out of many, we are one. In Christ, we come together and find a deeper unity. People of God, come and worship that out of many, we may be one. Creator, Romans marveled at the early Christians. See how they love one another, they exclaimed. And people came, drawn by their caring and courage amidst persecution. You have called us to community in this place and time to live courageously. Even socially distanced, our many paths are joined in seeking you together. We praise you for your creative ways. You have made your love known in us and through us. Now, at this threshold in our common life, give us compassion, humility, and wisdom to know how best to move and to serve. Give us ears to hear your whispers, coaxing us ahead without fear. Give us trust to follow where you lead, let us reconcile inner and outer, old and new, form and substance, mercy and justice, following Jesus, who came to make all things whole. We pray with grateful hearts. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone. This is Pastor Sarah with a message for the kids. In our scripture readings this morning, you're going to hear the idea that God is one, and also this idea from Jesus that we who follow Jesus can be one. Now, this is Pride Month, and we have rainbows all over the sanctuary to remind us that 
we, our community includes all different kinds of people. People who have different gender identities, different sexual orientations, different life experiences. So I wonder what we do with this idea of being one and also including all different kinds of diversity. That's a question that I want you to be thinking about as you listen to the scripture this morning and as you hear the message in Reverend Calandra's sermon. Are you ready for our blessing? Okay. Dear God, thank you for making so many different kinds of people. And thank you for bringing us together into one community of followers of Jesus. Amen. I hope you guys have a great week. You're done with school! Woo! Today's scripture is first from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. I'm reading from the inclusive Bible, so it may sound a bit different from the versions you have in front of you. Listen for the word of God. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. You are to love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Let these words that I command you today be written in your heart. Teach them diligently to your children and repeat them constantly. When you are at home, when you are walking down a road, when you lie down at night and when you get up in the morning, tie them on, on your hand as a reminder. Wear them as a circlet on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And also from the Gospel according to John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26. I do not pray for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all may be one as you, Abba, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you loved them as you loved me. Abba, I ask that those you gave me may be here with me so that so that they see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me. Because of the love you had for me before the foundation of the world, righteous one, the world hasn't known you, but I have. And these people know that you sent me. To them I have revealed your name, and I will continue to reveal it so that the love you have for me may live in them just as I may live in them. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Greetings, friends in Christ. I am Reverend Calandra Nevenzel, your Southwest Association Minister. That means I'm your contact resource and support person for all things wider UCC Church. I am also a pastor at Zion UCC in Baroda, where I live with my husband, Zach, my dog, Buddy, and my cat, Zeke. I'm so happy to be worshiping with you today. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God. And may they inspire us to action for furthering the church's mission of love for God and neighbor, so that it would be so 
on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. It's certainly a time of a lot of change and uh, new beginnings for many of us, isn't it? Maybe you have some changes or new beginnings in your own personal life. And it's a time to look forward to fresh, new energy here at First Kalamazoo. And so it's a good time to talk about why we do what we do here. Why do we do church? Why do we have Sunday school, youth group, Bible and book studies, outreach to our community, and everything else in between? The way all of these separate pieces look over time may change, but the goal remains the same. That they all may be one. This is Jesus' prayer for us. That we all would be one. That all of God's people would be one. This is our denomination's motto, too. The United Church of Christ is built upon the idea of oneness in diversity. So the UCC allows for differences in belief by its polity or the way the church functions. Each congregation, to a certain extent, gets to decide what they believe, how they operate, what their biggest values are. We are all called to be in covenant relationship with one another. This is another way of saying that we strive to be better connected as the whole body of Christ. And in the body of Christ, every body has a voice. And they play an important part. This applies to all the crying babies, the laughing children, the struggling parents, the well-seasoned, the single, the skeptical, the disabled, all across the gender and sexuality spectrum. Everyone here is a piece of the puzzle that is Kalamazoo First Congregational UCC. The passage we read from Deuteronomy is called the Shema in Hebrew, named after the first word in it, hear. It's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. The Shema starts out by telling us that God is one. Now, this can be translated and interpreted in all sorts of different ways, like saying there is only one God. But I like to think of it more as God being one as in whole, complete, just as God is calling us then to be whole, to be together, which makes us complete. Just as God is considered three persons in the Trinity, but united as one God for one mission, we too should strive for this kind of unity. Our focus in the church then is not on numbers, not on which people are in the church or not, not on making sure we agree on every little thing, good luck, right? But rather it's about finding a way to celebrate our diversity while also striving for unity in our mission. What is our mission then? What does it mean to be one and whole as God is one and whole? Well, the Shema lines up with the UCC's statement of purpose which comes from Jesus' version with a very important addition of loving our neighbor. To love our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the UCC at the denominational level states its mission is this. United in spirit, inspired by God's grace, we welcome all, love all, and seek Justice for all. Our mission as the church comes from what we read as Jesus' example. And what did Jesus focus on most in his life and teaching? Well, he showed empathy for all people. He spent a lot of quality time with folks. 
especially those who needed it most or were cast out by society. He also made time for his disciples and his close friends and even time for himself. And he taught them lessons by telling them stories. He taught opposition to evil empires in favor of lifting up those who were hurt by it. He taught us to weep together and laugh together, to share our bread and all of our resources as one community, and to live as one for love of God and neighbor. I like to think that the different churches together can function as parts of the body too. Because churches can have different strengths as well as different main goals they want to emphasize within our larger mission. But we know it can be hard enough working to keep all of the parts of a single congregation united, let alone our wider circle of the Southwest Association, Michigan Conference, and National UCC. It takes the hard work on all of our parts to intentionally stay connected and include each other on what is going on. And it takes vulnerability of reaching out and helping when another is in need sharing with one another in both our strengths and our weaknesses. And then we can take comfort in knowing that we have these wider connections to lean on, especially but not only when we are going through a difficult or a big change like a pastoral transition. And the full body of Christ, of course, reaches beyond our denomination and country, even beyond our present day. When we celebrate communion together at church, we sometimes speak of the communion of the saints, which includes the saints of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, all over the world. We believe that they are all somehow present with us despite the difference in time and space, eating and drinking all of us together as one. Wow, that's hard for us to wrap our minds around, and yet I know in my heart that it is true. One way we help connect with the past and find our grounding is of course in the reading and studying of scripture and other readings and stories that have been passed down. Also in singing hymns together and following orders of worship that are grounded in tradition, sometimes, of course, putting our own spin on it. We celebrate together through the beautiful sacraments of baptism and communion, and we mourn together in community when there are losses, too. And we connect with those who will come after us by teaching the children of the church about all of this. What Jesus taught us to focus on, our traditions, and of course encouraging all people to make it their own. And being united in Christ's love, building on those who came before us, we work together toward a just world for all. The UCC's vision statement, by the way. This is a big task, I know. But often, it's really done through small everyday discussions and actions. Every time we welcome someone in our church, through Sunday worship service, Sunday school lessons, Bible study, fellowship, acts of service in the community, and yes, even planning and discerning that's done in those meetings. All of us can do our part in this mission. And it will come together as the church's wider mission. And when unity and diversity conflict, if we can hold them together, both in tension, valuing both, and always, always, always valuing all of God's people, most of all, then we can continue to live and work together as one. 
So my prayer for you is that you would begin this new season here with renewed energy, hope for the future, openness to change, and trust in God's mission for this church. This church that belongs to each of you and all of you together. As we all do our part as pieces of one big puzzle that is God's whole church on earth. So we pray. Unite us, God, in your will, your love, and your truth, so that through us, the world may recognize you as the living, loving God. In Christ we pray. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the prayer for our church. All loving God, we pray together for our congregation here and for all those hurting and healing, and that we would come together to support them in love and prayer and service. We pray for every congregation of the church that we may end the sin of our division which makes a mockery of Jesus' message before the world, and that the Spirit of God may, may remove from between us the walls of separation, which do not reach to heaven. We pray that we may reach out to meet one another and rejoice to find that we are all siblings in Christ in our association, the wider church, and God's beloved all over the world. We pray that we may be one, worshiping as God's beloved children in spirit and in truth, and that we may commit ourselves to the wild way of Jesus in order to transform society through offering forgiveness and receiving peace. With the confidence of God's children, please join me in praying the prayer as Jesus taught his disciples. O oh God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are here outside to celebrate our graduates. We have graduates from this year as well as some graduates from last year who we didn't get a chance to bless in person. So I will invite first Lily Graham. You can stand right here. Okay. Lily graduated from Loy Norix last year in 2020. She has been studying at WMU and is continuing studies in environmental science. Diane is going to bring a blanket here. Because of your history of dance, we've picked out fabric that has ballerinas on it. Oh, Let's yeah. wrap this here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. God, we thank you for Lily, and we ask your blessing on this next season of her life. We pray that this blanket will be a tangible reminder to her of the love of her church, those of us who are loving and supporting her through this and every season of life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and congratulations. <laughs> Next up, I'll invite Miles Lekin. Miles just graduated last week from Kalamazoo Central High School. He will be continuing his studies in jazz saxophone at WMU next fall. Diane has picked out a w WMU themed fabric for one side of your blanket, and we've got camping themes on the other. <laughs> Thank you.
God, we thank you for Miles, and we ask for your blessing on this next season of his life. May this blanket be a tangible reminder to him of the love and support of his church community, those of us who are loving and supporting him through this and every season of his life. Amen. And next we have Maggie Leckin. Maggie also graduated from Kalamazoo Central High School last week. And in the fall, she will be continuing her studies in biochemistry at Kalamazoo College with a Hayes, Hale? Hale? Hale uh, scholarship. I picked an environmental. So, your planet? So, we have an environmental theme. <laughs> and save the tigers. <laughs> there we go. God, we thank you for Maggie. We ask for your blessing on this next season of her life. And we pray that this blanket will be a tangible reminder to her of the love of her church community those of us who are loving and supporting her through this and every season of her life. Amen. We have two other graduates, Maria Matthews and Bobby Wimsat, who cannot be with us today, but they are also receiving blankets and blessings, so you can look out for those videos in upcoming services. Now, let's all give a round of applause for these graduates. You guys wanna come back on camera for a second? Good morning, friends of First Congregational. I am Carol Chandler, and I am a member of the Hidden Treasures Finance Committee. We meet once a month to review the financials, stewardship, budget, projects, and investments. I am happy to report that we, as a congregational, are on target with all of the items listed above through the month of April. The members of this committee want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of our church. We have created a beautiful institution and culture of community, caring, and love. We all want to continue our mission and your financial support and commitment is essential. Our commitment began with my grandparents and continued when my parents moved to Kalamazoo. My siblings and I were raised in this church and its community. I then raised my son in this church community. He then was married in this building. My family made a commitment to this church and you as members have made the same decision to be part of this institution and culture. Please continue to give and consider your financial support of FCC. As summer begins and we transition to the season of fun and sun, don't forget your support of our church.
Thank you. 